directions are going there. The eyes everywhere else move to the other end of the field. The entry of the two sides, Manchester United on the left. Led by Tommy Doherty. On the right by the six foot four, Laurie McMenemy. And to those two managers, they must think what a difference a couple of years made. Two years ago, they were both in sides relegated from the first to the second, Tommy Doherty with Manchester United, Laurie McMenemy, Southampton. But what a game of cruel twists it is, and delightful moments too, because they are both now really back in the limelight again. Peter Rodriguez on the right there. to the Duke of Edinburgh. Lou Macari there. The Southampton players, Mike Shannon. So they're wearing yellow shirts with a blue V. His Royal Highness, the Duke of Edinburgh now, coming out with Sir Andrew Stephen, Mr Ted Kroger behind, Secretary of the Football Association. after the introductions of the two teams. And any presume they must be waiting now for Her Majesty the Queen to arrive into the Royal Box, and that's exactly what the Duke of Edinburgh is watching for now. Certainly I felt that the normal procedure was that uh, His Her Majesty is that the teams were presented first and the Royal Anthem, the National Anthem came after that. So, the Duke of Edinburgh making sure that all is well in the Royal Box, and now we do have the National Anthem. Sheffield Wednesday. Well, for him, what a difference a year can make. Jim Steele there on the left. 
Bobby Stokes is there and Mel Blythe. Mike Shannon, the man who might yet swing it all. Paul Gilchrist, who scored that vital first goal in the semi-final. David Peach there, the fullback. Ian Turner, the goalkeeper, who said he was a bit nervous around about noon. Nicky Holmes and Peter Oscar, who's been here before for a cup final. So too is Jim McCallion and the great professional Hugh Fisher and Laurie McMenemy. Former guardsman, friend of Jack Charlton, been to places like Doncaster and Bishop Auckland and Grimsby and had a few troubled times earlier on in the season at Southampton when they couldn't win away from home. Clive Thomas, the referee, and his two linesmen, Mr Gray and Mr Marshall. And, of course, the reserve lines for today, Mr Appleby. So, while His Royal Highness now goes back to the Royal Box to take his seat, both sets of players will be glad indeed that they can, at last, put all the preliminaries behind them and set about getting the nerves out of their muscles. And, in fact, Southampton made the first move, in fact, and have gone down to the Southampton end of the field. The two teams, then, just to give you a last check, Manchester United, first of all, exactly the side, as forecast, Stepney, Forsyth and Houston, Daly, Greenoff and Buck and the skipper. Coppel, McElroy, Pearson, McCary, and Hill, with McCleary the substitute, manager Tommy Docker. For Southampton, the only query for manager Laurie McMenemy was who to play at number seven, whether it should be Hugh Fisher or whether it should be Paul Gilchrist, and Paul Gilchrist got the spot. Turner in goal, Rodriguez and Peach, Holmes, Blythe and Steele, Gilchrist, Shannon, Osgood, McCallion, Stokes, and Hugh Fisher the substitute, Laurie McMenemy, the manager. Gordon Hill, who started the season in the third division with Millwall. A lot of managers looked at him and a lot of them wondered and couldn't believe quite what they were seeing. Tommy Doherty came in, bought him and kind of regretted it for a moment. But will it be Hill's day or will it be Mike Shannon's day? He's been here often enough for England. Will it be Peter Osgood's day? Peter Oscar, who's been here before with Chelsea and helped them to win the Cup in 1970 in a replay against Leeds United at Old Trafford. And from Old Trafford now, Lou Macari, the man that Jackie Charlton said could well be the man to swing the whole thing Manchester United's way. Such a busy little Scottish midfield player. What about Ian Turner, the man who said that he was nervous at midday? But a man who came from Grimsby and two years ago was playing for Grimsby Reserves in front of a hundred people. The toss-up now between the two skippers. Martin Bucken on the left, Peter Rodriguez on the right. And we really couldn't have a better referee today here than Clive Thomas, a man who changed his whole philosophy a year or so ago. He seemed to be booking everybody in sight, playing it more to the letter than the spirit of the law, but he really examined himself very closely and there's no doubt at all about it that Clive Thomas's refereeing has been one of the features of this season and he well deserves this honour here at Wembley this afternoon. So as we get towards the kick-off time it's a question really as to whether Southampton now can hold on as Alex Stock of Fulham was saying last night can fight and scratch and compete and compete and compete for the first 20 minutes to half an hour of this game to keep Manchester United at bay and then to start build something of their own account. Well, Peter Rodriguez, their skipper, is a man who has got to get them going and keep them going over that critical first 20 minutes. And Laurie McMenemy seems so relaxed. Shaking hands with Tommy Doherty there. So they are going to suffer a bit on the bench there in the next 90 minutes. The action there is going to come onto the field. And professionals will always say the cup finals are all about players. And it's these 22 players now who are going to have an hour and a half that they may never forget.
So the man who says we've got to Wembley and now we've got to win it is this man, Mike Schaller. And as from Scotland, we hear that Johnston has put Rangers 1-0 ahead right at the start of the Scottish Cup final against Hearts at Hamden Park. Rangers 1-0. So I wonder what Lou Macari is having a word with Clive Thomas about that. Clearing a point of law. I wonder. I look at the watch. 76 Wembley is almost underway. And now it is as Manchester United attacking the goal to our right in red shirts and white shorts, black stockings. Get us away with Southampton in those yellow shirts and blue shorts. Here's Peach. Here's Daly. And now with Stuart Houston. Pearson. Steele sticking right close to him. Trying to play the long ball here towards Shannon. Played on nicely by Shannon towards Stokes. But Buckham was in there like a dart for Manchester United. Daly now. Trying to get uh, a bit of progress down that right touch line. But Nicky Holmes was there for Southampton who finished sixth in the second division. Manchester United still with one game to play in the first division, but looked destined to finish third. A quiet man in the Southampton side, Nick Holmes. Daly with the throw. Pearson coming towards him. Coppel. That's the shot. Oh, and there was a chance there! There really was a chance there, but the whistle had gone. Makari's feet maybe were too high. But Koppel got in a beautiful shot there. Koppel shot, Turner beating it down, Makari was in there, and his feet were a little high, said Clive Thomas. I thought they were offside, actually. Uh, he didn't... I don't think he, he really... He would have allowed a goal there, because uh, the challenge on the goal was a bit quick and a bit unfair. But an indication maybe of uh, Ian Turner's nerves, Jack? Yeah, maybe, you know, I mean, Cobble did what we expect Cobble to do today. He got inside and he got on his left foot and he whacked one and it was a good shot and he was allowed to do this whole game. Right, a free kick to now Southampton. Well, that would have been a disaster if Manchester United, certainly from Southampton's point of view, if Manchester United had uh, whipped one in there, but here's a long ball forward again, Houston jumping underneath that one, Buckham getting it away. There's Buchan giving Alex Stepney a bit of stick there. I thought Alex Stepney just a little. I should have come and took that one. Well, here's Stokes. Shannon not quite able to get hold of that one. Houston feeding McElroy. Rodrigues nipping in, and so too is McCarthy. Gordon Hill, very deep. Cut out by Rodrigues very neatly. There's McCallion. Now McCarthy. There goes Osgood. Manchester United player. Not back to Alex Stepney. For Scythe. Good ball there into space for Daly. Popple just beating off that challenge of Jim Steele. Brian Greenoff, who's adapted so well into the back four for Manchester United this season. And what a lovely ball there to Houston. Touched on along the touchline there for Gordon Hill. This could be dangerous, this could be dangerous, Pearson down there, oh, and McElroy very nearly turned it in, and Southampton were nearly in trouble again, but the whistle had gone. Jack? Yeah, he, uh, he gave him offside here, I, I think it's very, very close, but if you look at the monitor, you'll see that he was just offside, but uh, if, if, uh, who was it took the ball first? If Sammy McElroy had taken the ball cleanly in the first place, he was in with a great chance, he was a bit unlucky, just left him. Good decision there by the linesman on the far side, Alf Gray because there wasn't much in that uh, offside decision. Turner then, who's had one or two moments. And that must just have a few little worrying moments for Southampton. This caused one or two little ripples of worry amongst their side that they can be exploited as uh, quickly as that. Pearson. 
shearing the ball again from Steele, taking a nice pass back from Popple. Manchester United on the go again, and offside again, this time against McElroy. On the two chances have had there, Brian. The, uh, the number of people Manchester United have had inside the six-yard box, never mind the 18-yard box, is phenomenal how they get there and get there so quickly. That ball there that was played offside, the ball really should have gone across field to Gordon Hill, who was completely free and asking for it. And he was ignored, whether we've seen or not, I don't know. Shannon. Greenoff. Going past. McCallion as though he really wasn't there. Forsyth. Koffel. Looks in good form. Looks very sharp indeed and full of confidence too. Forsyth. Crossed in once more there, nodded on, and this time Turner safely behind it from uh, Macari's header. Holmes, good break. Brought down, free kick. Foul by Forsyth. At the beginning of the season, he would have got booked up five times for that. But I think Clive just swallowed it a little bit and said no. He was a little bit late, and I think he was a bit deliberate as well. But a free kick given, David Peach is going to take it. Mick Holmes up there ahead of him. Peach, who scored a penalty and would be the penalty taker for Southampton today. Osgood coming towards this one with a really desperate leap there. Holmes almost had the ball at his feet. Peach for Southampton. Shannon coming for this one, trying to turn it back again, but that ball will be out of play for a throw to Manchester United. Just over six minutes gone, no score. Well, they've taken it from quite the wrong place. Alex Forsyth will have to go back and take it again. No, well, they'll get it taken eventually. It's going to be Daly. And it's with Pearson. Nice play. Daly, nice play. Koffel looks the dangerous man. In these early stages, played through a game, but again, Southampton, are they playing a good offside trap? They've done it very well up there now, and they've got away with it, but it's, it's a very dicey game to play, especially here at Wembley. And it, but Manchester United have thrown so, so many people forward that one of them are almost bound to go offside at some time or other. I feel Gordon Hill's taking up some great positions on the left, and, and they're going through the middle, when they find that he's there and start feeding him, then they're going to cause him a lot more trouble. Instead of playing the ball through their back four, they're going to play it across it. A throw to Southampton. to throw to Manchester United. Forsyth. Pearson, skillfully kept in, but only to the benefit of Jim Steele. Picking up Paul Gilchrist here for Southampton. Played on for Shannon. Will Buchan thought about passing it back, but Stokes had got in behind him, and Buchan thought better of it. Sammy McElroy. Brian Greenoff. Coffin. Peach getting in well there. Timed that challenge beautifully, and here's Osgood. Stokes up with him, offside. There's a pattern emerged already in the game, Brian. Manchester United are not going to do anything different to what they always do. They're playing the ball very sharp and very quickly around. They're playing it wide to the wingers. And they're knocking them up with Pearson, and he's, he's knocking them back. Peach for Southampton, played back for Turner. And Southampton are pushing up a little bit on, the, on them, but they're not pushing up tight enough at the moment. They've got to get a lot closer to the wingers than that, these two fullbacks. Right, so that's something we must watch. Peach must get close in on uh, Koppel, and Rodriguez on the far side must get close in on Hill. Now, here is Koppel now, and you see Peach is about four or five yards off him. And now this gives Manchester United another chance to break. Makari, though, stopped by Jim Steele. Trying to take on a bit too much, though, and Forsyth is going through. There's a gap there for Forsyth, and there's a shot that's well wide. But that was a perfect example, Jack, of how things began once Peach didn't get tight enough on, uh, this on is Steve Coppel. This is... Uh, Malcolm Allison once said to me, it's not what you do when, you've got, when they've got the ball, it's what you do when, when you've got it. And in fact, Paul Green says, just let him go away from him a few yards, and when the ball came there, he, he didn't know where he was. And he, you give Koppel this room to control it, and then look, you're going to get in trouble. 
And there's Forsyth with a lot of space, but not a particularly good shot. So quite a duty for David Peach, and there's Nicky Holmes. Shannon slipping once or twice in these early stages. Houston. Offside again, and Pearson a good three or four yards offside. Play on, though, said the referee. Good decision. And now, <laughs> right at the other end, Mike Shannon caught offside. Well, we've got two sides here playing the offside trap, which, as Jack says, is a dangerous game. But certainly, if you play it well, it's a very effective game. It is, but if, if one thing's going to spoil this cup final, it's going to be exactly this. Because if it's done and done properly the way they're doing it at the moment, they'll stifle all good attacking moves that are, that are starting to build up and happen. Daly will take the throw. Steele in, challenging rather high there on Pearson. But he made contact with the ball, it's a throw for Manchester United. Just over ten minutes gone, no score. Daly. Holmes was in hard, Gilchrist is there quickly. Stokes is trying to battle away there against Forsyth. Linesman flagging on this side. And the referee overruling it. I should think he did, I didn't see anything wrong there no, at neither, all. Neither did I, Jack. Strange throw there by uh, Mike Shannon. He took it very quickly, and Macalio very nearly picked it up, and it took Green off to whack it behind for a corner. Again, I felt Alex Stepney just slept a little bit on that throw in. He left Jimmy Green have to run back towards his own touchline to clear a ball that was difficult, not knowing where anyone was behind him. And Alex could see the whole picture and didn't come at all. I'm a bit worried about Alex Stepney at the moment. Here's Peach with the corner for Southampton. And Bakari, one of the smallest men, in fact, who got it away. Copper just dinking it over the head of Holmes. Here's Hill on this side of the field. Long ball there. This time, Houston would have been onside. But Macaliox had got it away. Now it comes to Pearson. Played on again for Hill. Onside, he's all right. Is this number one? No, pushed away there by Turner. Well, that was one occasion when the offside didn't work. Osgood. Playing it on now for McCallion. Houston. And Rodriguez going in there, just nicking it inside for Paul Gilchrist. Osgood again. Rodriguez. And McElroy putting it out of play. It's with Osgood. Akari there first. Shannon in half. Osgood again, chipped inside again for Nicky Holmes, played back for Gilchrist, and an offside flag up against Mike Shannon. But again, the referee saying play off with Manchester United in, in uh, control and in possession. So good work so far by Clive Thomas, he's really keeping this game moving. Long, long kick there. Steele playing it back. Ever so delicately there to Ian Turner. Shannon, Stokes, Holmes. Shannon. Nice reverse ball there. Look at the ground that David Peach has made here. Onto the right foot. Not his best one, but he's got the cross in there again. Shannon nodding it on much more. But Callioll's right in there. Southampton have got players into that area now. And Stephanie gathering well. A throw that releases Gordon Hill. Daly is inside him. Throw to Manchester United. Well, Southampton looking a little better in the last couple of minutes or so. A nice little move forward there, and Henry, Lauren, many of the manager must have been uh, relieved to see that. Just coming up to a quarter of an hour gone, still nil-nil. The position that Peter Osgood's taken up is uh, a little bit strange for me. He's always been a, a midfield player, Peter, but today he's playing up on the right-hand side. I don't know what reason this is for. It could cause him a bit of trouble, actually, in the air. Akari now. Houston. That'll come through to McElroy. 
Blythe is right behind him. And Akaleo caught that away. Here is Osgood. Inside for Gilchrist. Shannon going wide on the right. Here's Stokes. Played back again. Nice ball there. And good play here by Southampton. Peach coming up quickly. In a lot of space now for Southampton. Letting one drive off Alex Forsyth. Behind for the corner. Interesting the amount of space they had there. And it's just, just, a, just a little bit unbalanced, Manchester there. And uh, it's happened two or three times. The, the space seems to be occurring for Southampton down this left-hand side. For, unfortunately for them, it's not... Uh, they haven't got Mike Shannon in there to use his pace in it. Paul Gisrate isn't, isn't the, uh, the pace he's to play us. Pitch for the corner. Oscar there with a header over the top. As I was saying before, Peter Osgood has taken these positions up wide on the right and he's very good in the air and if he can get in behind, he's going to cause Manchester a little bit of problem there. Couldn't quite get above it. No, but it was a good header. It could have dropped in the far side as easy as over the bar. Stepney with the kick for Manchester United. And after those early flurries, the game a little more evenly poised. Those early flurries of Manchester United. Akaliov to Osgood. Nobody there. Only for side for Manchester United. Now Steve Koppel. The peach is the man who got the tackle in. He got it in there, Brian, but he was a little bit late again. Still holding off Koppel at four or five yards. Pearson. Nice touch again. Daly right up. And Koppel right up. And Peach closing quickly enough. And a goal kicker. Southampton. Stokes. Gilchrist. That's not a bad ball if Rodriguez can pick it up. Rodriguez again. And now Makari for Manchester United. way back and lost it and here's McElroy that's still not away yet Osgood very very deep there passing it back to Turner and that could easily have fallen for McElroy Jump again by Shannon. Stokes couldn't quite latch onto it. I would imagine we'd see a lot of Stokes feeding off those flicks from Shannon. Gilchrist. Kaliog. Peach. Well, Koffer got the better of him there. And now it's Jerry Daly. Houston. Space over there. Hill is over there with him. Here's Gordon Hill. That lovely little left foot coming. Look at the space here for Makari as well. The shot coming across there. I don't think Steele really knew how he got that one away. Houston again. Makari. Why well, stopped that one going in? But a throw to Manchester United. What a tremendously gifted lad this Gordon Hill is. Tremendous balance and poise. To think that he started the season in the third division with Millwall. Here he is at Wembley now with his throw for Manchester United. And a good long throw as well. Blythe going in there. Makari going in there. Well-timed jump there by Makari. Jim Steele. Again, Makari losing that one in the air to McCallyog. 
Caniel completely miscuing there as well. McElroy. Well, it's a bit muddled at the moment. But now, can McElroy do something about it? No, because it's lifted high into the stand by Mel Blythe. So a throw to Manchester United. Just coming up to 20 minutes gone. Manchester United nil, Southampton nil, Gordon Hill's long throw. Mel Blythe's header, Paul Gilchrist. Long ball forward for Mick Shannon. Sort of ball that he enjoys getting, but really didn't have quite enough room on that far side. Not seen any uh, Shannon runs yet, Jack. No, that was the one that he needed. He just got uh, a yard short on that one. If he'd been able to knock it forward, he was clear. And then he needs to catch him. Shannon back for McCallyog. Osgood's header. Obviously, Laurie's told uh, Peter to get in there and look for the, the balls that are going to be knocking the box in the air because they do lack a bit of height and a bit of strength there, Manchester United. And uh, he's just like it gets over for him. And significantly, not quite so much noise from the Manchester United crowd at the moment. Blythe, McCallyog, Shannon. But now there might be as Pearson tries to get hold of this one and succeeds in doing so, but I think he's taken a knock as he got to it, but Blythe got up. Pearson, I think, has taken a... had a nasty old knock there. It's that right thigh of his, and he's, uh, it's his first game for something like three weeks. That'll be a terrible blow for Manchester United. David McCreary, their substitute, already beginning to warm up as a precaution on the far side. There's David McCreary. But I imagine Stuart Pearson would take an awful lot of persuading to walk off this field, unless he really has to this afternoon. It's Macari at the moment with some delicate skills. Good safe header away, though, by Rodriguez, and Greenoff turning it into touch. A drop kick back from Tommy Doherty. Played on for Gilchrist. Turned in again this time towards Stokes, but it was Buckens' header that got it away. Nicky Holmes coming back hard, but in fact it's Steve Cottle now for Manchester United. Steele slipped there for a moment, and it was a rather clumsy challenge of his in the end. But Manchester United keep possession with Jerry Daly. Halfway through the first half, still no score. Played the ball quite fairly. A Kaliog, the long ball forward, that's the one Shannon likes. And the crowd were rising to it, they knew what to expect, and so too did Buckham. So it'll be a throw to Southampton. Buckham did well to cover. Shannon there, matched him for pace. Peach now with a cross, Osgood on the far side, Houston's header, it'll only come as far as Holmes though. Nodded down again towards McCalliog, here's Gilchrist. Peach played in an offside, again Manchester United playing that offside trap so well and Lou Macari I notice acknowledging it to the linesman saying well done the referee, the referee decided to play it on though, he wants to keep the game going which is a good sign standard of the game is very good Brian you know, there's been no real sign of nerves from either team apart from maybe the first couple of minutes from Southampton, since then it's settled down and they're both playing the game the way it should be played But still no goals. Now Gilchrist. Osgood and Shannon are both in the middle. Stokes is making a run as well. Oh, a little back heel and a little step forward again this time. And Manchester United again coolly getting themselves out of trouble in the end with Greenoff and now Forsyth. Good ball forward now for Daly. Steele taking him down and a free kick. Never quite matched Jerry Daly for pace on that run. It was a foul that was always going to happen because if Jerry Daly got that first, he, the other lad was committed, Steele, to try to get it, and it was going to be a foul anyway. So a free kick. Pearson looks all right. 
fit again now as Forsyth takes this free kick for Manchester United. McCallieog stabbing it forward there for Shannon, but he didn't have quite enough firmness on it. Greenoff. Houston. Back for Martin Bucken. Lofty forward again and offside. It was McElroy offside there, and he was giving uh, Bucken a bit of stick there, I think, for not maybe uh, releasing the ball a little quicker. Sammy McElroy, all this game up to now, has been the one that's been going into the offside positions. He's holding, he's turning off the back man, as we call it. And uh, you can't get away with this. You've got to go deeper and make your runs from deep. Another burst of shouting from the United fans. And it's United in possession again with Bucken. Scythe. Southampton have weathered the first vital 25 minutes which so many people felt would be so important to them but now it's Koppel trying to get away from Holmes and a free kick given to Manchester United right on the corner of that penalty area Koppel brought down by Holmes a signal for Greenoff and for Houston to come forward they've got two, four, six, seven people and the free kick about to be taken that was it. And here's Alex Forsyth with the free kick. Driven low, hit against Shannon. Played for Hill. McCallioff getting it away. Bucken, isolated there. Houston in for Bucken. Bucken again for Makari now. Oh, he's gone past Blythe. He turns it back there for Daly, and somehow that was knocked away by a combination of defender and goalkeeper. But here's Gordon Hill. A back heel and a beautiful one there for Scythe. Turned in first time, and Phil Chris taking no chances at all. Lovely play there by That was the United. best bit of quality we've seen in the game. It was all there, good passing, good running. Blue Macari stealing through in an inside left position to get, him, get himself clear play a beautiful ball back that really had goal written all over it. Well, here's the corner. Curled in once more. Turner jumping for it, only pawing it away, and it took the right foot of David Peach to get it right away for Southampton. It's nice to see Clive alone, a bit of challenge on the goalkeeper. Most referees nowadays blow the whistle as soon as anyone breathes on him. Now he's been one of the stars of the afternoon so far. Shannon played for Holmes, made some good breaks. Holmes Peach, there's that long cross again. There's Osgood on the far side of it. That's the obvious tactic, as Jack was pointing out. It's a, it's a shame Holmes lacks that little bit of pace to exploit the space that's been opened up for him up that side. If Gordon Hill had been left that space, <laughs> then the other game would have been over now. Ted Bates on the right there, great old servant of the Southampton club with manager Lauren McMenemy. Now another break from United, it's Sammy McElroy, stopped though by Gilchrist but only half stopped as Makari picks it up with that short whippy little stride of his, here he is again, flick forward this time for Daly, here's Koppel, this could be danger, Forsyth going on the outside, here comes the early ball, right across the face of that goal, and Hill couldn't quite turn it back. Played one or two good overlaps, Alex Forsyth. Yeah, he's got into a good position here. I think the ball was maintained to be driven a little bit lower than what he did, and it took a deflection, which pushed the ball towards the goals. But if you notice, Koppel, Manchester United won't play the ball in behind the fullback. Pearson comes across, has the ball played at him, and then Koppel drops off backwards. The fullback may normally runs into a covering position, and it leaves Koppel to have the ball played to him, and then he can run out the fullback. The fullback, in fact, has got to start sticking with Koppel in spite of the fact that Pearson is in behind him. He's not got to worry about the coverage, he's got to pick him up. 
Now Hill. Now Houston. The point being that, that Peach has got to stick close to Koppel, as we said before. Here's Peach now. Showing a lot of confidence there. The right foot isn't his best foot. But that was a half volley of, what, 35 yards straight back to his goalkeeper. Canyon, Stokes, touching it nicely. Here's Holmes, as Jack says. Lacking just that half a yard of pace to get away. Now McCallion, chance really in the, to line everything up and indeed to call people towards him and then really make quite a hash of it. Been here for a, a cup final before, ten years ago for Sheffield Wednesday, when they lost to Everton. Half an hour gone, Manchester United nil, Southampton nil. We haven't had the early goal in, Brian. No, we've had the 30 minutes that Southampton, we felt, would need to hold Manchester United. That's gone by, and so far no disasters for the underdogs. But here come Manchester United again through their skipper, Martin Bucken, but it was Mike Shannon right back to turn it back to uh, his goalkeeper, Ian Turner. Shannon, beautifully killed, nice skill there. And Rodriguez making the run, but uh, Houston, a nice interception, and now this could set United on their way as it finds Gordon Hill. It's Gilchrist coming back to save it, really, for Southampton. Here's Osgood, played in night, beautiful ball played inside there for McCallion, but he couldn't quite find Blythe, who'd made a run up on the far side. Still Southampton with Bobby Stokes now. Here's Shannon. Oh, and it might come to him again. It might come to Osgood again. It might still come to Osgood. Trying to turn it, but the whistle had gone. Well, a few peppery moments there for uh, Manchester United. The ball just didn't come clean to him. It got, went to, went to uh, Shannon first, didn't come clean to him. And it went to Osgood and didn't go clean to him either. And you know what would happen if it had? Oh, yeah, well, Peter, especially in that position, he doesn't miss him. Koppel now. Peach sticking a bit closer that time. Daly with Manchester United's throw. Pearson. Daly. Oh, this looks dangerous. Oh, and he's curled right across there. Rodriguez. Oh, and it must have seemed an eternity before Turner got there to uh, get on the ball before Gordon Hill came in. I bet Peter thought he had done it all wrong there. It's McCallyog now for Southampton. The long ball forward, exactly right for Shannon. Oh, and he very nearly made it. Mike Shannon there, he cannot believe that that didn't go to the back of the net because that caught Alex Stepney's boot. From behind, we see it. There we are, just catching Stepney's left boot. We said before, we said before the game, Alec is tremendous at narrowing angles, and he narrowed that one right down. And the, probably the hardest part of the field to narrow it with someone coming right through the middle. But he did it, and he did it very, very well. It should have been a goal. But, but you put that down to good goalkeeping and not lucky goalkeeping, Jack. Nice daily. Well, Shannon, that really was one of the classic Shannon breaks. It didn't really bounce quite the way he wanted to bounce, but then in the end, uh, at least enabled him to get a shot in. I thought he had the time line, and he didn't do it very well. Pearson, Daly. And now Forsyth. And now Daly. Here's Forsyth again. Jerry Daly. Forsyth. Doing a little bit of hustling here, Southampton, but the ball eventually goes in there over the heads of them all. Goal kick. 
I think my man of the match up to now has been Jerry Daly, in fact. He's had a, a really good game. He's supported everything, he's worked at the back, and he's got into some good positions inside their box for through balls and things, and he's really looked a good player. And he cost £12,000 when he came to Manchester United from Bohemians, the Republic of Ireland side. Tremendous player. Rodriguez, the long ball forward. Buckens header away. Gilchrist, in fact, obstructed by the referee. Houston, a long ball forward. Pearson's darting after this one. Steele is there to police him. It's got to be a corner. So now Manchester United bring him forward again. Houston's coming forward. Forsyth is coming forward. Sammy McElroy with that corner. Noted in once more. And some pushing there, presumably by Makari. He's an amazing little lad, Lou. He gets in there and he competes in the air. He's, he must only be about five foot two. But there's no balls in there that he can't get in the air. The determination that he shows is a credit to the game, actually, for a little fella. And there was a signal, I think. You probably caught the last bit of it from Makari to the Manchester United fans to get cheering a bit more. Steele getting that one away from McElroy's header. Green off. Gilchrist. Stokes. McCallyog. On this side is Peach if he can reach him. Playing it safely back to Ian Turner, the goalkeeper. Shannon in the air, Mel Blythe just touching it to his skipper, Peter Rodriguez. About eight minutes to go to half-time. Osgood. McCallion. Now, has Gilchrist got a bit of pace here? Turning it in first time, but there's nobody there. Well, or maybe there will be. Shannon came up so late. Very nearly got it in. That was, a ball, that, was a, that was a good ball from him, actually. Playing it across the face of the goal, just too far for the goalkeeper. And defenders are committed to playing it. It was a good ball in here. If anyone had been cutting the line of that ball, that was a goal. Here comes the corner. It's out to Rodriguez. <laughs> That's what dreams are made of, Brian. You catch him right in the fly-in. <laughs> Peters didn't. Martin Buckham. Stuart Houston. Get to Shannon. Gilchrist to Osgood. And out of McCallyog. Rodriguez making a run down the right. Just dinking it in again, but uh, Houston there to head it away. McCallyog again, but Houston. the next man he's got to take on and Shannon good piece of timing Daly nicking that in first time Pearson with the header McElroy's right in there too Gilchrist only getting it half away here's for Scythe Akari for Scythe chipped in once more towards Gordon Hill Peach 
play to Shannon with a good deal of confidence. Shannon for Osgood. A touch back this time for McCullough. No, oh, that'll never, ever reach Bobby Stokes. Instead, it's with Martin Bucker. And now United have got everybody bar Alex Stepney in the Southampton half of the field. Linesman flagging for a free kick to Manchester United. The referee agreeing. Five minutes to go to half-time. Stuart Houston with the kick for Manchester United. Played short to Gordon Hill. Played back, just look at the pace, or the space rather, there for Houston. Although he couldn't play Richard. Are you as confident about Manchester United winning as you were before the start? Yes, I am. They've only had one moment of anxiety at the back, really, and that was when, when um, Mike Shannon got clear. The rest of the time, it's been Manchester United have looked like they could score, really, at any time. They've had some good chances, got some good positions, and the ball just hasn't gone for them correctly yet. But um, uh, I still go along with Manchester United. They've still got the quality in this game at the moment. from the earlier injury on that one he uh, he got over the first one okay I should imagine he got over this one as well that was rather a wild yes and Tommy Doherty a bit upset I think with that challenge by Peter Rodriguez on uh, Lou Macari Rodriguez saying that I was a good foot away from him and Tommy Cavanagh is having a word with Peter Rodriguez the United uh, trainer and now a Southampton player down Offside. I think it's Paul Gilchrist, isn't it? Early in the game, uh, Manchester United were caught offside very, very often, and that's the first one for quite a while. They're tending to play very square up front when they build it up slowly, and people run with the ball. When they played it wide, it looked different class when they played it wide to the winners and let them have a go. Well, that pass by Shannon miscued badly there, straight to Coppel. Pearson, who seems to have shaken off that injury for a moment there, he was running well. Now Peach. Now McCallion. Steele. Osgood. Trying to get a 1-2 going there with Bobby Stokes. Last minute of the first half. Gordon Hill hits the long ball forward there for Pearson. Jim Steele again is there for Southampton. Here's Nicky Holmes. Rodriguez just touching it again for Holmes. Gilchrist. McCallion. Peach. Again, hit towards Gilchrist this time, Osgood, or rather Shannon was on the far side, here's McCallion. My goodness, he drove that one, but he drove it straight at a United defender. And a chance now for a counter-break from Manchester United. Popple now. Again, past Peach. 
Holmes covering in behind him. Steele in behind Holmes. Brought down this time, and it is a free kick. No doubt about this for a foul. No doubt at all. So a free kick for Manchester United. Alex Forsyth is going to take it. Dicked in there towards the far side there, just fisted away. Hill turning it back. Corner. That looked like a Gordon Hill special there. But the whistle goes for half-time. There we see it again. Fisted away. Hill catches it beautifully on the half volley, and it cannons off. I think it's Mel Blythe there. Behind as the referee signals the half-time whistle. So, Hearts nil, Rangers 2 up at uh, Hampden Park. Laurie McMenor is Southampton, the underdogs who started this cup campaign as 100-1 outsiders, are holding Manchester United, the red-hot favourites here at Wembley, 0-0. Coming back for the second half of this 1976 FA Cup final, where the half-time score was, of course, Manchester United nil, Southampton nil. Alex Stepney there, who made that one very good save from Mike Shannon, giving the benefit of his considerable experience to Gordon Hill. Alex Stepney, who's been ten years at Old Trafford now, he joined them from Chelsea. In fact, I suppose if you can pin one, uh, one save down to his name, it's a save he made in this stadium when Manchester United won the European Cup final in 1968. A tremendous save from Alex Stepney from the shooting of Eusebio of Benfica. Well, he saved well from Mike Shannon there in the first half. And what we've got to look out for, obviously, is as Don Reilly was saying at half time to see whether Southampton go on attacking Manchester United, which is a very bold gamble indeed. So now we're just about ready to start the second half. Southampton now will be attacking the goal on our right. So Tommy Doherty back, Laurie Maitlemy behind him. Clive Thomas having another look at that watch to make sure that everything is in order. And away we go again. Nil-nil. And I fancy we might have a pretty dramatic 45 minutes awaiting us now as Osgood finds Nicky Holmes. It's with David Peach on the far side. A little touch for Holmes again. Kaliog playing it forward. Stokes. Now will Shannon get to this one? Challenged by Greenoff. Goal kick. Scythe to Koppel. For Scythe. Hill, a beautiful ball there. Gilchrist holding off just a moment. Making it through there for Pearson. Played on now towards McElroy. Houston backing up well. A slight misunderstanding there, allowing Bobby Stokes to get in, even at the expense of a corner. United now playing towards their own supporters. Bakari coming up, Osgood going back. Corner going in, Houston didn't quite get a touch to it. It's with Jerry Daly now. Alex Forsyth to Brian Greenoff. Went up for the corner and has stayed up there. Koppel getting that cross in, but way behind the Southampton goal. And a goal kick to Southampton. Gordon Hill, Pearson playing it back again for McElroy.
Bailey, nice, neat, short, simple passing at the moment here by Manchester United. Coppel on the far side, good run again by Daly. Now he's turned inside. Forsyth again with that cross hit low. Coppel picking it up again. Rodriguez coming in and committing himself, and Shannon coming in behind him. Jack. A part of Manchester's game this season has been getting the ball around about the edge of the box and then hitting him across the face of the goal with a, a lot of pace on. And they haven't done a lot of it this time. And, and suddenly at the beginning of this half, the first ball to get to put in. The fellow whacks it across and in, in among a lot of people. Probably Tommy said to them, you know, this is, this is what you need to do because you're not going to get anything in the air off this lot. And he's probably right. And if you'd been Laurie McMenemy, Jack, what would you have been saying to Southampton? Exactly what John Rebbe said at half time. Keep playing the way you are. Wait for the chance to happen. Give nothing away at the back. Challenge for every ball. Keep chasing and hope that the break goes your way. And he might be right, it might. Booster. Stokes. McAlliog. Shannon. There's the cross coming in again towards Peter Osgood. No, it'll come instead for Nicky Holmes. Touched on again, no. Lost his way a little bit there. His intention was to try and feed Osgood again. It's now with David Peach for Southampton. McAlliog playing it forward and they just didn't come back quickly enough. Laurie said to me um, a week or two ago that he had a good team. And I hadn't seen them this year at all. And uh, they certainly impressed me, Southampton. They certainly look a better team than I thought they were going to be. They're playing a lot better than they did in the semi-final, uh, Jack, without any doubt at all. But clearly a side that's gone to Aston Villa and won convincingly in a replay and gone to West Bromwich Albion and won in a replay. They've got something about them. Calm down, says Laurie McManamy. Keep playing the way you are. Ted Bates on the right of him as we looked at it. Pearson, Daly, and stopped, but only half stopped by Peach. Oh, a lovely bit of skill there, though, by Steele. Osgood, a nice bit of skill as well, and there's another of these Shannon runs. Button to man with him, and Shannon trying to get round inside him, but Buckin stuck to that job well. Possibly the first time we've mentioned Martin Buckin. He's been very steady throughout the game and hasn't made a mistake yet. And he's, he's looked for those runs from Shannon and cut most of them out, and he's done it very well. You get a feeling, you know, with this Manchester side at the moment, that unless they score soon, a little bit of their confidence could go. A throw to Southampton. It's the first concession you've made, Jack. You felt very strongly for Manchester United. Yeah, but they're, uh, I think they've done enough to score, and they haven't done it yet. And because of this, you know, Southampton, the longer the game goes, without giving a goal away, and if you are still in with a chance. Well, here's Stokes now, finding Shannon. One against one as he attacks Stuart Houston. Being forced, though, across the face of that area, and there were plenty of Man United defenders lined up there. Shannon then going... In on the back. He went the wrong way. He went the wrong way there, McShannon. He went to Stuart Houston and went on the inside onto his left side. I thought he should have gone straight in and gone on his right into the box. Forsyth. Now Coppel. Pearson. Daly. Akari. Coppel. Breaking into the middle there for a moment. Daly again, seems to be everywhere. Well, I don't think he intended that, but it found Makari. I tell you, most of the noise at the moment is coming from the Southampton end. I think they begin to sense that something might happen here this afternoon. I think that tells its own story. going in there, a touch off for Osgood, what about that for a touch as well by Osgood, but alas for Southampton it went into touch I think Laurie must have had a word with Peter Osgood at half time about his work rate, it wasn't very good in the first half, he was taking up some good positions but not, not much work, 
this half he seems to have stirred himself a little bit and he's starting to move around and take up different positions and get involved around the ball a little bit more. Well, he couldn't have a better opportunity than here today to uh, justify the money that's been spent on him. Nearly £300,000. A free kick now to Manchester United, though. Forsyth. Pearson. Koppel, away he goes again, this little flying winger, Koppel now turned inside for Pearson, oh! Brilliant break out there by Manchester United. Pearson started it, uh, Jack. Yeah, he's done well, Pearson, he's come and shown all again, he's had very little joy. Koppel coming in on this one, it was a good layback. Unfortunately, the, black, the lad that came onto the ball, I don't know who it Pearson. was, Pearson again. It's just slightly the wrong angle to, to, to play the ball where he wanted to play it, especially if we're trying to do it with his left foot. It was the one that he did deflect him with his right, actually, to pull it in the right direction. Osgood, lovely header. Holmes again making these breaks, and there does seem still to be a lot of space down that left-hand side, but he hasn't made very good use of it there. Going up towards Pearson again. Does have this great facility, Jack, for shielding the ball all the time. Pearson denying yes, he, Jim he, Steele. He backs into people. Now a run by Shannon again. Sorry, I interrupted you, Jack. He backs into people uh, very well. Good at holding balls off, laying them back for people to come and support him. And this is one of Manchester United's best ploys. They they get people up to support Stuart Pearson very very quickly, so that they give him a target to hit, just to lay the ball gently down to for people to come on and take forward. Osgood again. Kaliog's up there. Bakari right back. Ball still in play. Osgood can't believe it. Linesman was beautifully placed, as indeed he should be. And Daly now sweeping it to this side of the field for Houston. Forward for McElroy. Quietish game Sammy McElroy's had. But now it's with Shannon. Trying to get Rodriguez going. Ball still in play again, says the linesman on this side, Mr. Gray. Martin Buchan. Bakari. Houston. Trying to play it forward again, but Blythe was there for Southampton. Oh, that was a rather crude challenge there, I thought, by Stokes on Makari. For Scythe. Steele. Doesn't let much get past him, Jim Steele, this afternoon. That's not a bad ball either, straight to Jim McCallion. Shannon is up front, there's the long ball aimed again towards Mike Shannon. Stokes tried to go in, his feet were very high. But again, Clive Thomas plays the advantage and plays it well. Houston forward to Pearson. Nodded on this time for McElroy. Again, Jim Steele is there for Southampton. McCallion. Osgood after this one. Houston with him. Two former Chelsea teammates, and now it's Osgood again. Slipped inside this time for Bobby Stokes. Slipped inside this time for Holmes. They weren't far from getting a very clear opening there for a chance for Holmes to have a shot on goal. At this stage, Brian, I wouldn't put money on it either way. Now Gilchrist. Osgood. I think it's uh, Rodriguez who's taken a knock there, Mel Blythe who's filled in on this side of the field for him for the moment but the game goes on, Clive Thomas has just given him a quick look it's Koppel versus Peach played in for Makari and still Rodriguez is down and now Houston, this is where Rodriguez would have been 
and Shannon had to come back, and I think the ball will just spin out of play and will give Clive Thomas the chance to call on the Southampton trainer, Jim Clooney. Sammy McElroy's been a big disappointment to me today. He's probably the most ineffective of the Manchester team. Well, somebody putting some boots on there. Hugh Fisher, by the look of it. The substitute. Well, he seems to be in a pretty bad way there. Just behind the left ear, he's uh, caught a clout. Hugh Fisher, the man who ruled himself out of the semi-finals, he told Laurie McMenemy, no, I don't think I'm fit enough to play. Paul Gilchrist got his chance and scored an opening vital goal. And the great unselfish act there of Hugh Fisher might well have denied him her. A Wembley place as well. Well, I'm glad to say from Southampton's point of view, with water all over his hair and his face, that Peter Rodriguez, their skipper, is all right to continue. Not sure he quite knows where he is at the moment. Played here in the 69 final for Leicester City when they lost to Manchester City. Daly again. Osgood in quickly, but he's only found Koppel. Holmes touching it away there towards Stokes. Brian Greenoff got that back in, though. Makari being forced out. Here's Houston. Curled in once more. This might come yet. Steele has fallen, and somehow he's got it away. Brian Greenoff right in there, and in the end, it was McCallion who put it behind for the corner. I think everyone stopped for a handball there. They thought it was a handball. But it wasn't. I tell you, Rodri cost them dear. Rodriguez is still in trouble too at that. You can probably see on the left-hand side there, it's still crouching down. But there's the ball going in across the face of the goal. Not it down against the crossbar there by Sammy McElroy. The nearest we've had to a goal. Here we come again. Not it backward. Now watch McElroy against the crossbar. Rodriguez falling to the ground. Rodriguez after this one. Now McElroy's turning it on a bit. And so too was Rodriguez. The flags are out from Old Trafford now. The game swung back Manchester's way a little bit in the last five minutes. So delicately balanced, Jack, that it needed just one thing to make you feel that it would go United's way again. And that's the way their fans are feeling at the moment as Sammy McElroy now takes this corner. Houston is up again. Two, four, six men up for Manchester United. Curled in there. Holmes got the header. Now it'll come for Gordon Hill, just where he loves to hit them, but not like that. I think a lot of managers who've looked at Gordon Hill before he signed for Manchester United were impressed by a lot of things, but not by his... Uh, Finishing his ability to finish powerfully, and he's done a lot of good finishing this season, but that was way, way off the mark there. A throw to Manchester United. There hasn't been a quarter of an hour into the second half now. There hasn't been a mistake yet, Brian, by anyone at the back in defence that has caused any concern at all. Maybe that's the way this game's going to swing. Koppel. Well, Peach gave that one away to Koppel. Holmes is after him, though. Did well, Nick Holmes there. McCallion. Steele in first. Daly only half stopped by Gilchrist and McElroy obstructed by Peach. Free kick to Manchester United. There we are, a wide shot there of that whole area, the red shirts coming forward in some numbers now. It's with Koppel, with Forsyth going outside him. 
That's the ball for Forsyth. Driven low again, as Jack Charlton has said they do. Shannon. Trying to turn and get away from Buchan. Really, Buchan has put a padlock on chain on him today. Look at Rodriguez right in there. Well, Manchester United overall have got the younger legs. It's a very experienced uh, Southampton side with a few veterans in it. And I wonder, the longer this game goes on, just how well they'll be able to withstand this pace. Is there a point in that, Jack, that the, the older Southampton side might begin to flag towards the end? No, I think in the old days when this ground was very holding, it might have applied. But in this game, I don't think it applies at all. They're not that old, you know. Throw to Manchester United. Here's Pearson again, again shielding that ball from Steele. Just a little touch that finds Koppel. Crossed in towards McElroy, stopped beautifully there by Blythe. Needed a bit of uh, strength and a bit of bravery there because the boots were flying. For Scythe. Oh, he's given that away to Stokes. On for Shannon, on for Osgood. Shannon again. Chipped in there now for Rodriguez. Hit first time when he had so much time. The pain there on the face of the Southampton skipper Peter Rodriguez. Why on earth did he take such a quick pot at goal? He didn't have a lot of time, actually, Brian. If you look closely here, the ball come to him. If he, if he stops it, he's going to be closed up very, very quickly. It was the one that he had a hit and hit well. And he I didn't. I stand corrected. Well, it's a throw. And Gordon Hill being spoken to by referee Clive Thomas there. There's obviously been a clash between uh, Gordon Hill and Paul Gilchrist. Paul Gilchrist, in fact, has marked Gordon Hill for most of the game, and Rodriguez has been left free at the back. I think with the idea that he could come forward now and again when he felt like it. Makari's ball to Koppel. Jerry Daly. For Scythe. Greenoff coming up and look at the space there for him. Slip forward again. Might be it, but it's not as Blythe hooked that one away to Shannon. Here's Stokes. Shannon's outside him. That's the ball. Kaliog's inside him. And that's the ball. Back for Shannon again. Back for Shannon again, hit! Brilliant piece of play by Shannon. He even got a bit of curl on that as well, but it was just a yard too high. Jack? It's a good one of Mick Shannon's good points, going with a bit of acceleration across the box and hitting balls on the run. He just got it too well. It could have done with a little bit less. So, a throw. To Southampton, and they're bringing McCreary on. So David McCreary, a man who never stops running, will be on in a moment for Manchester United. Who do you think they'll take off, Jack? Strangely enough, I think it'll be Gordon Hill. Yes, indeed, you can see Tommy Kavanagh with the number 11 there, alongside... Well, I didn't see that, actually, so it was a good guess. Good, good work, Jack. Greenoff. Now McCallion. Shannon up ahead of him. And Houston just getting in before Bobby Stokes. Here's Peach. I don't know really why they're, they're bringing Gordon Hill off and putting McCreary and, and bringing uh, Mac, what do you call him? Uh, McCreary. McCreary on. I can't see any, any sense in it really. Tommy's usually employed this play late on in games. But I don't think he's going to change the pattern very much, and I think it's going to take a little bit away from Manchester United's attacking possibilities. I think I would have brought Sammy McElroy off first. But it's Gordon Hill who goes, and it's David McCreary who's on. And the 
first sign maybe that there is a little bit of concern on that Manchester United bench. But something has got to be done. Gilchrist now going for this one. Challenging hard, but losing it in the end to McElroy, and here's Houston. McElroy, first touch for McCreary. McElroy. Kept away by Blythe. Not easy for anybody to come into a cup final as a substitute and pick up the rhythm of the game. Won't be easy for McCreary. He's a busy little player and he, he chases around and he, he worries people and he gets involved in almost every ball. And this is probably what Tommy's brought on, trying to upset the, the defence a little bit. Osgood not quite able to reach that one. Buckens here. Halfway through the second half now. And still the score, Manchester United nil, Southampton nil. Holmes going in for that one. It'll fall for McCallion. A touch here for Gilchrist. Hit forward again for Osgood. Now they've got men up, almost a three against three, but Makari came back quickly. Just look how quickly seven of them got back for Manchester United, in fact. Here's Peach in a bit of space. The long cross in again towards Peter Osgood. Osgood's header. Shannon won't get there, and Greenoff had to turn it behind. There seems to be a bit of pressure on the faces of those Manchester United players now. Long cross, won well by Osgood there. And Greenoff turning it away. So, David Peach again with the corner. Osgood and Shannon right in there once more. Holmes is at the near post. Still not very far away, Gilchrist with the header. Houston with the header clear. Here's Pearson. Touch there for Brian Greenoff. Forward now for Makari. Now a chance for United to break. For Scythe. Creary on the far side, the substitute. It's been a good will, hard for cup finalists, Brian, up to now. Not a lot of great chances at either end have been created, but it's, it's got its merits, the game. Here's McCreary, played back again. Turned in towards McElroy, could come something here, no. For Scythe again. Deeper one this time towards Makari, but uh, Turner judged that well. And a nice little throw out here for Stokes. On for McCallion. Sold a good dummy there on uh, McElroy. Shannon. Not a good return pass there by McCallion, but here's Shannon again. Trying to get a one-two going there. And that time, back and forth to concede the corner. Tight, skillful little one-two there between Shannon and uh, Stokes. And it's brought Southampton this corner with 20 minutes of normal time to go. If it's still all square, obviously, at 90 minutes, we get 30 minutes of extra time. Jim McCallion then with a the corner for Southampton. Jim Steele's come up on the far side, but pushed in order to... Uh, get a side of the ball, pushing the back on Brian Greenoff. Jack? The game's swinging one way and then the other way, it's Southampton on top and then it's Manchester on top, and there's very little happening really in midfield, but there's not a lot of goal chances happening in either end. It's a, it's a funny sort of game, played more or less across the three-quarter area, rather than either in the goal miles or in the middle of the field. Koffel. Daly. Koppel again. For Scythe making a run on the outside, but it was a dummy run. There's Koppel's cross. Really wasn't a very good one. Gilchrist. Throw given to Manchester United. And Lou Macari patiently waits for it. Pearson then shielding that ball, just flicking it wide there towards Macari, but Gilchrist again read that situation so well for Southampton.
Stuart Houston with the throw. Pearson taking it on his chest and turning. But Rodriguez finding Shannon. Obstruction and a free kick. Clive Thomas indicating there was a pull on Shannon's shirt. Rodriguez with a kick. Hit towards Peter Osgood. McCallion. Or rather, Stokes now McCallion to Peach. Chipped in again towards Stokes. Callioch playing it forward again towards Nick Holmes. Stokes with a shot! It wasn't far off the mark. Suddenly you get the feeling, Brian, that Southampton are no longer afraid of Manchester United at all. And they're just going to play the there game. By Holmes and a nice touch there by Stokes, but wide. Holmes again winning that ball. Koppel, past Peach, McCreary, a touch for Koppel again. Two Southampton players converging on him though, and it's Bobby Stokes with a touch to, a touch to find Nick Holmes. And a throw to Manchester United. towards McCreary, but Peach read that well. McCallion with a long ball, there goes Shannon. Osgood tearing into a space as well, and Osgood's got the touch, and Stepney had to make the save. Alec was out like the shot there. But another brilliant run there You are trying to narrow this angle and here. Great Stepney's position. Stepney, six-yard line, look. Great position, very quickly. Good chance for Peter, for, uh, Peter Osgood there. Now Koppel. For Scythe. Stopped by Jim Steele. The long ball forward. Trying to bypass all that Manchester United midfield and find Osgood or Shannon, but it was a bit too long. Houston forward this time for McCreary. What a lovely dummy there, but look again how well Steele is covering in behind. Oh, but he's given that one away. But Blythe played it well. They've combined very well, Steele and Blythe. They've covered well for each other this afternoon. There's the long ball from McCallio, but it's out of play. Jackie, Steele and Blythe. They've done excellently. That was probably the first mistake that either one of the two back have made. And he nearly cost them dear because of the ball from Little McCleary had been a little bit more pace on it. They could have been in real trouble. But they've done a magnificent job today, these two. Now it's Brian Greenoff for Manchester United. Pearson, Peach again in, very positive play there by the uh, Southampton fullback. Forsyth to Makari. Good run here by Makari, brilliant run, and look who's right back to do the challenging. Peter Osgood was there, working hard in that situation for Southampton. Pearson struggling a bit again, and they've already got their substitute on, remember. And if there's extra time, that might be quite a significant point. Pearson really is struggling a good deal now. Inside the last quarter of an hour, we really get now towards the heartbreak time, because anybody knows that one mistake that they made is going to be very hard to cover it up and to recover from it, but here's Pearson again. Doesn't seem to be worried too much about his injury there. Got him a corner. Stuart Pearson gets himself at the positions that are beside people, and, and this area, you're always going to take a lot of knocks because people are always coming in to challenge you from behind. And he's done well today because he's took a real battering from the two-back centre-halves uh, of, of Southampton. So here's the corner then. Steve Koppel with it, floated in. Towards Stuart Houston, the internal safe catch. <laughs> 
Forsyth. And that's cut out very neatly by Rodriguez. Here's Osgood. Gilchrist telling him where he wants it, but it was played just, just a little too much weight on it. Ockham playing it sideways here for Houston. Now McElroy. Nice little turn of speed and a jinking run, but Blythe with plenty of time to turn and recover and play it back. Peach. Osgood, what a lovely header there. Twisted in mid-air, found McCallion, the long ball there towards Shannon. Now it'll come for little Bobby Stokes. Hit well, just over. It's Southampton who are making the better-looking breaks at the moment. Little Bobby Stokes, it's a, a couple of good shots here that have just been slightly off target. This one, dipping all the way. And it could have fitted because Alec had just come off his line a little. Forsyth for Manchester United. Pearson. Daly. Makari. Hoster. Fury fighting for that one. Blythe, very assured and very confident, though, this number five for Southampton. Got in well there again. A really faultless performance by him. Wink from Mike Shannon showing that there are not too many nerves as far as he's concerned, although with 12 minutes to go, it would be a terrible moment to lose a cup final. Equally, you might say it's a marvellous time to win it. And as Jack says, it will be a brave man who put money on this match now. Here's McCallion. Here's Holmes. Osgood outside him. That's the ball for Osgood. Stokes and Holmes are waiting in the middle. Still Osgood, will he get a shot in? No, he tried a little too much. And they closed tight on him. And it's with Pearson. Jerry Daly. Makari. with Brian Greenoff. Forsyth. McCreary. Corner. Sometimes you think Manchester United's game is, is just a little bit too short all the time. They play very few balls over any, any distance. And maybe it's something that's happening in the play at the moment. If you feel that they can open the play out a little bit more. Here's Koppel with the corner. Pearson with the header, and Osgood... Well, that looked for a moment as though that was going dangerously near his own goal. So it's another corner. This time Sammy McElroy is going to take it. Manchester United with two, four, five, six men in that Southampton penalty area. It'll come out for Daly, hit first time. Gilchrist got a foot to it. Pearson got a header to it. It's still not away yet by any means. McCreary bravely went in there and Blythe in the end got it away towards Shannon. A touchdown now for McCallion. A chance maybe for him to release Holmes on this side. Shannon on that far touchline. Played this time for Gilchrist. Stokes has made a brilliant run. Here he is. But Buchan is guarding him. Gilchrist, he spotted Osgood on the far side there and Osgood headed it in. But Forsyth got it away. Aidan McCreary in first. He seems to have no nerves whatsoever. Doesn't matter if, to him if the boots are flying all over the place. He goes diving in there. Ra Rangers now leading by three goals to in the Scottish Cup final against Hearts. Johnston having scored his second goal. But still no goals here as we reach nine minutes to go. Free kick to Manchester United, a foul by Blythe on McCreary, and uh, Blythe showing a bit of dissent there, and Clive Thomas reacting fairly quickly to go have a word with the big number five. I can't understand why he was complaining about that one, it was a blatant foul. Yeah. 
So, Southampton push back again as Greenoff hits a long, long ball, but they get a goal kick and a bit of relief. Southampton have played very well at the back and pushing out and not allowing Manchester United into the box, especially in positions like that. They're not cluttering up in front of the goalkeeper. And it's paid off dividends because Manchester can't get in the bin behind them. Shannon, nice touch again. Carry on. Oh, look at this. Bobby Stokes. Hit well. Oh, he's there. Stokes has put Southampton in the lead. A great break there for Southampton. And they're all off that Southampton bench. Bobby Stokes, only five foot seven of him. Here it is again, Jack. Yes, it was a good run, and he was just on side, I felt, when the ball was played. He didn't catch it very well, but like we said, Alec took him a good position, but the bad one beat him. And it sneaked just in the corner. It's, it's been threatening to happen, though. So, Bobby Stokes, who scored only... One goal against Blackpool, one against West Brom. That's only his third cup tie goal of the season. But now look at the other end here. Turner is through. And saving it there as Daly went racing into him. Well, it could have been one of those classic occasions. Tom Doherty looking a bit pensive there. Where a side goes into the lead and relaxes for a moment and gets caught. But Southampton was saved there by their goalkeeper. And now incredibly are this one goal into the lead with six minutes to go now it's Pearson well the uh, Saints supporters up from the south coast what a moment that was for them to treasure like I said Brian what a time to score the winner because it certainly looks that way now. Unbelievable. Starting this cup campaign at 100 to 1. Given very little chance indeed when the semi finals were decided, how could Southampton possibly stop the might of Manchester United? And yet they fought and they've competed and they've played well. Their breaks have got better as the game has gone on. And now, with just these five minutes now to go, they lead by that one priceless goal to nil, scored for them by Bobby Stokes. Smallest man in their side, and he's done the job that might count most of all. Shannon not playing a very good ball there and finding Greenoff. It's with Forsyth. Those six minutes or so, five minutes now. I'm sure to people like Laurie McMenemy on the bench will seem the longest five minutes of his life. That ball was out of play. It's very obvious, you know, that Southampton have actually done the homework and done it well and stuck to it. And it's paid off great dividends for them today. Explain that, Jack. In what way and what particularly have they done with their homework? 1-0 well, to Southampton, 5 to go. The full-backs have done their job exactly right. They've stopped them playing down the wings. Gordon Hill was brought off because he was ineffective. Koppel has been virtually made ineffective in the second half. They've done it right. And now here's Osgood. And now here's Shannon. And away he goes again, Bucken is after him. Goal kick. Alex Stepney running there to get it taken quickly. Four minutes to go. And worried men on the Manchester United bench. There's Ted Bates at the far side indicating four minutes to go. Come on, says Tom Kavanagh and Tommy Doherty. And Greenoff now taking it up for Manchester United. This will be the shortest four minutes in Tommy Kavanagh's life, and it'll be the longest four minutes in Laurie McMenemy's. Now Pearson for Manchester United. Turning inside, but Nick Holmes getting it away again. He knows it's safe all the time it's in touch. Tremendous reception now from the Southampton fans. Almost dead silence at the other end of Manchester United. Pearson. A goal kick. They're up and down on the bench there, that Southampton bench, like men possessed. 
they suddenly see a superb light that's been shining at the long old end of a tunnel for a long time during this cup campaign and suddenly they realize that it's almost there three minutes in fact that's the united end with little to say for themselves at the moment martin buchan the manchester united skipper and at the moment you get the feeling it could be sunderland and leeds all over again Three times in four years a second division side has been to Wembley. Once Sunderland they won, once Fulham they lost. And now Southampton have two and a quarter minutes. Two and a quarter minutes to hold on to defy everybody who said that it was a one-horse race. Well, maybe it still could be Manchester United's day as Koffel takes up the running. Stopped by Stokes, the man who scored the goal. Back this time for Steele who's given nothing away at the back. Shannon taking a nudge in the back from Greenoff. Play on, says Clive Thomas, and that's what Nicky Holmes is doing. Here's Paul Gilchrist now for Southampton. Oscar's gone through the middle with Holmes outside him. Inside the last two minutes. Holmes now crossing it again towards Peter Osgood. And Forsyth guiding it back to Stepney. It's a professional grind. Southampton are throwing balls and trying to get another goal and I think it's a mistake. At this stage of the game they should be keeping the ball and not letting Manchester have it at all. Well, they've got a minute and a half left now, Jack. And it's a free kick to Manchester United that could yet spell danger for Southampton. Clive Thomas wanting it taken from the right spot. Alex Forsyth is going to sling another one in there, but Southampton have got everybody except Mike Shannon back now. Chipped a little shorter this time. And Holmes blasting it away. Exactly one minute to go. Don't you think Laurie doesn't know that? So Bobby Stokes could be one minute away from being a match winner at Wembley. Houston pumping it hopefully forward again, but yet again that yellow back four of Southampton have come forward at the right time and caught Manchester United offside. That was a great play. It's, at this stage of the game, players are always tempted to go backwards towards their own goals in fear. Southampton came out and did it exactly right. Well, that was a strange free kick to play there. I would have thought it needed to be belted at the other end. But they know what they're doing. And they are now, by my watch, 10 seconds plus any injury time that Clive Thomas adds on. 10 seconds away from bringing another great surprise to a Wembley Cup final. Koppel now for Manchester United. It's got to be the last fling for United now. Steele versus Daly. A throw to Manchester United. Maybe it's not all over yet. McCreary going in there. And Southampton again getting that ball away to the safety there, but only as far as Greenoff. We're in injury time now as Greenoff plants it forward again and again they're caught offside. And that could be the crucial chance now for Southampton to calm themselves down, take their time, get the ball into the Manchester United half and bring about their victory. A half a minute of injury time already played. And they've done it! Southampton have won it! Bobby Stokes, his goal has done it! Larry McMenemy, emotional tears there. The underdogs have confounded them all. And Mike Shannon and Bobby Stokes celebrate there at Wembley. And look at those scenes of joy. Ian Turner, who was in trouble early on, but survived it all. Mel Blythe, the big number five, and the number two, the skipper Peter Rodriguez on a free transfer a year ago. Tom Doherty coming out with dignity knowing perhaps that he's been beaten by a better side on the day that did their homework so well. Superb scenes of great excitement for Southampton. Laurie McMenemy, a man who's known the real hard times, he's lost his job in the game before now, and he's had troubles before this season when Southampton could do nothing away from home. And they're crying there. Jerry Daly, is it? On the ground, crying and quite unable to believe that Manchester United are being beaten. Brian Greenoff. Alex Stepney looking more composed. Laurie McMenamin is on the pitch now, hugging his players. 
and there are three or four Manchester United players quite unashamedly crying. I was wrong, Brian, and I'm delighted. Look at Laurie. Even Maylin's gone a little bit at the moment. <laughs> He really is the genuine article, Laurie Bookman. He's upright and he's honest as the day is long. And he's fashioned a good side here at Southampton. But I think even beyond his wildest dreams was a side that could have won the Cup this year. So, the moment comes when Southampton go up to receive the trophy from Her Majesty the Queen. An unbelievable result. Peter Rodriguez. Cast on the heap, and nobody really wanted to know a year ago until Laurie McMenemy snapped him up. After a magnificent season, Manchester United have neither won the cup nor won the league. And receiving it from the Queen, Peter Rodriguez, the cup for Southampton. Ian Turner. Peter Osgood, the second time he's had a cup winner's medal, the last time 1970. Just got a picture of the Manchester United chairman, Louis Ebbers, there on the left of the picture. Mel Blythe, Hugh Fisher the substitute, Bobby Stokes, whose goal was fit to set before a queen. David Peach and Nick Holmes, Mike Shannon, some tremendous runs. I don't worry for so long. Jim Steele, absolutely unbeatable at the back. And now the favourites in the end were beaten. Martin Bucken, maybe getting a word of comfort there from Her Majesty. Alex Stepney, Jerry Daly. Stuart Houston, Alex Forsyth and Gordon Hill, the man who was pulled off. Stuart Pearson, who took one or two whacks and kept going. David McCreary, the substitute, who came on, but it didn't make a lot of difference. Lou McCary, Brian Greenoff, who was crying at the end. Steve Koppel, biting back the tears, and Sammy McElroy, too. Clive Thomas, who had a really excellent game as the referee. These are moments that they'll never forget. And there's Peter Rodriguez and Jim McElliog with the cup. Surely they're going to do a lap of honour. And when they do a lap of honour, I just hope they get the right sort of reception from Manchester United fans. Alex Stepney, well, it's the old business that nobody in a cup final wants to know much about the loser. Winning cups is all about the winners, and here they go. A few of them are shouting, a few of them are whistling behind that Manchester United end. But they won it, and they won it well. And at the moment, while those scenes of jubilation are going on there, Manchester United are waving to their fans, really not quite knowing where to put themselves or what to do. Brian Greenoff really is in a bad way.
suggest he was holding that cup up towards uh, Don Revy, who said that Southampton were going to do it. Tremendous moments in a footballer's life to come here when nobody really fancies you and yet to steal away with the biggest prize of all. Congratulations, Southampton, 1976 FA Cup winners. Hard luck, Manchester United. Southampton the winners and the man who scored the goal that gave Southampton the cup, Bobby Stokes. Bobby, the happiest day of your career? Oh, it's got to be, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Day well, we'll take, too much. can't say right. Yeah. <laughs> there was a moment earlier this season when you might have moved away from Southampton, wasn't oh. it? Yeah, Dana wrote to the local Pompey, yeah, but the move wasn't right, so I stayed with the boys. Really wasn't right, oh. was it? <laughs> Now, what about the goal? If you watch over there, I think you see it coming up. Now, let's have it in your words when it, when it uh, comes up. There it is. Now, come on. Well, uh, it's a good ball from Jim McCallio. What a great ball. Uh, it just banks that right for me. Oh! Is in the moment I left my foot? Yeah, right, so right, you'll see it again. Hold on. When you say it just bounced up right, I mean, it really was a beauty, wasn't it? Yeah. Stokes, cool. That's not yeah. how you spell it. <laughs> Were you expecting to see your name up in lights like that today? No, nah, no. Nah. It's a fairy tale. Oh, here he comes again. Yeah. Okay. Brilliant ball from Jim. Great Jimmy ball. Lay. It just thinks he's right for me. Well, hey, you don't really, you know. It's magic. Magic. Great goal, bud. It's a great goal. Don't turn up in the way. It's magic. Oh, what a goal. Just... Oh, they are. Great ball. Now, where's Jim McCallion? Somewhere over there. Hey, Matt, Jim, yeah. what about that ball? Yes, well, uh, Lace was facing the wrong I think I put it just a little bit behind him, actually. <laughs> No, uh, I just, when it got laid back off of Mickey, then uh, I seen Bobby running and I just uh, played it. <laughs> You've managed, in path. fact, to play quite a few through that have put them under pressure. Mike Shannon had got through on a number. Uh, yes, well, you know, this is what we were sort of playing to, really. Up to Aussie, back, and then Mickey and Bobby running through. Peter Osgood, you, you said that you were in the mood Sorry, today. Did you enjoy yeah. it when you got out there? Well, I don't know, it was a bit fast, actually. Uh, I didn't get a lot of the ball, you know, because uh, we was, uh, as Jim said, knocking it over the top for Mick. Mick did great, as usual, for us, you know. And it worked out uh, smashing for us. Mick, Mick Shannon, when did you think that you could actually win the cup? Well, I thought first half, Jim, not a great ball for me, and Alec, well, I don't know, he just got a toe to it or something to it. I mean, I thought it was in then. But uh, that was always on for us, you know, and we, it was just a matter of getting it right. And, uh, I mean, Christ, uh, the lad didn't have hit it well. I mean, it just dropped right for him. And, I mean, he's, he's the best in the club at it. We've said it, we've been so saying long, it all so long, for so long, yeah. and, I mean, well, what can you say? Oh, dear, oh, dear, it you to death. What about the Manchester performance? Were you disappointed by it? Well, they, they must—they were a bit edgy, I think. You know, sort of young kids. You know, they, they seem to be a little bit nervous before the game. You know, you could sense it. After about ten minutes, you could feel it. David Peach, you were at the, at the at the receiving end, as it were, when they were coming at you. Did you ever feel in trouble? No, a couple of times he uh, got past me on the outside. I think it was I was a little bit too eager to get the ball, you know. But once I just stood in front of him and let him and jockeyed him, he never felt he was going to go by me. Now, Laurie McMenny, come and say hello, Laurie. Congratulations. Hello, Tremendous John. performance. Hello, thanks very much indeed. Now, when did you feel that you had the game in your pocket? When the ball hit the back of the net. <laughs> no, I, um, I didn't think 
that Manchester United pro uh, gave us many problems in the second half. In the first half, I was always worried. Uh, the only problem I had in my mind was if, if they got a free kick out of corner. Um, the, the free kick, which was flicked on and headed against the post, that was a very good corner and deserved better, really. But when that didn't go in, I, I turned to someone next to me and I said that I, I, I didn't, couldn't see them winning it then. Well, now we can show you the goal again, and we'll have a look at it yes. now from behind the goal. I wonder if you'd tell us how you see it from here. Well, Jimmy McCallio actually, I think, had a little look before he struck that ball. Bobby ran forward well. I wondered if he was offside. I didn't realise he hit it as early as this. Full marks for doing that because he knew where the goal was and he stuck it right in the corner. That is a much better goal than I thought it was. I thought Bobby had took it on one stride, you know, a bit of control and then hit it. But the lad hit it and it was going away from him and he struck it in the, in the opposite corner. That was a very good goal, good technique. When did you think they were going to win? I couldn't see us losing, Gerald, but I, I, you know, I, we had a lot of good chances early on, and when we didn't hit the net, I thought Mick had a great chance. That was a tremendous ball off Jimmy McCallion. Now, but, everybody, um, everybody saw this game as being yes. a matter of Manchester United well, coming at you. Yes. Now, what did you have in mind, and what worked for you? Um, I think the trouble is, Gerald, that you just said um, everybody had this in mind. You, you haven't seen much of us this year. And the, and the top press writers haven't either. And it's not a criticism, it's a, it's a fact, it's a fact of life, of life sure. that they've got to go and look elsewhere. And on paper, we looked as though we'd be second raters and underdogs. And we honestly and sincerely worked very hard at proving that we were a good team. I've got a very good blend of people. If you can understand, I don't think that we've been good enough recently to get out of the second division, but uh, we're good enough, was, to, was perform. This your best we're good enough to perform in the first. Now, we, we, anybody that has seen us regularly, the second grade of writers, will tell you that this is how we can play and I thought it was a good game but I'm, I'm possibly not in a position to... Have you played better play. than this this season? Yes, I thought we've had occasions like Sunderland we beat 4-0 it was a very good game and Bristol City we played some tremendous stuff early in the season we've had some excellent performances but to play well here I mean is a bit special and, and Mick Chan is just shouting don't forget his testimonial match on Monday night QPR <laughs> who are champions at the moment versus the cup winners can't be bad I think you'll be queuing outside there now aren't they? <laughs> Well, it should be, because Mick Shannon deserves everything he gets. Well, what about Europe? Uh, so does the team today. Well, Europe, yeah, we'll have to start expressing the Jory Hinney. Uh, <laughs> well done, Laurie. Yeah. Congratulations, everyone. Thanks, Just want to have a word Thanks, with someone we haven't talked to, Ian Turner, the goalkeeper. Ian, you had one or two moments in the, in, in the first half when you had players through who caused you a bit of problem. Yeah, one or two bubbles in the area, you know, of shots. Nothing serious. You had one I remember right out on the edge of the box that uh, looked yeah, a bit crucial. Yeah, when Gordon Hill through. We were caught a bit square at the back. Mm. We, uh, Pushed two full backs up, which we only usually push one up opposite side for a quick switch. But uh, we were covered. If he'd have got past me, Mel was behind, which I never knew at the time. But you certainly Quite. had matches this season when you personally have had a lot more work to do. Yes. I think he was one in midfield more than anything else. I mean, Alex Stepney never had anything to do, really. You know, and I don't think I had that much. But I think all the, the other ten had to work a bit. Sure. Yeah. Ian Turner, Keep congratulations anyway. Thank, Thank you. you for